for joining today's webinar, jointly brought to you by the Department of Commerce's International Trade Administration, Commercial Service Mexico, and the U.S. Small Business Administration's Office of International Trade. Our topic is Selling to Mexico Insights and Resources for Women-Owned Business. Mexico is the United States' largest export market. It used to be the second largest, and I've heard today this morning that it's actually our largest export market. And together with Canada and the U.S. is party to the U.S.-Mexico-Canada Agreement, one of our strongest and most innovative trade agreements. ITA and the Small Business Administration are partnering on a webinar series with the focus on assisting more women small businesses grow their business in overseas markets. Assisting women business, rural, minority, and other underrepresented communities is a priority of the Biden-Harris administration. This webinar today is the fourth in a series. We have also featured Canada, Panama, and Brazil, and we plan additional webinars with additional Latin American markets later this calendar year. I'm Sarah Hagee, Senior International Trade Specialist in the Office of Western Hemisphere at the International Trade Administration's office in Washington, D.C., and I'll be moderating today's webinar. Your microphones are currently muted. However, we will have a Q&A session at the end following all of the presentations. Please also feel free to type questions at any time during the presentation in the Q&A box, which you can see at the right lower corner of your screens. We will address as many questions as time permits, and we'll follow up after the webinar to address those questions we could not answer during the presentations. And please note, we will email the presentations, the recordings, all contact information of the speakers, and all useful information in the presentations in a few days. We have a very full agenda today, so without further ado, I would like to introduce Claire Eamon, Associate Administrator for International Trade at the U.S. Small Business Administration. Claire and SBA have been strong partners in support of U.S. women exporters, and we are very grateful for their collaboration. Over to you, Claire. Thank you so much, Sarah. It really is a pleasure for me to be returning to this next installment of SBA ITA series on international trade that's really designed with women-owned businesses in mind. Uh, as Sarah said, my name is Claire Eman, and I am the Acting Associate Administrator for International Trade at the U.S. Small Business Administration. So my office at the SBA, we really are the leading advocate for small businesses getting into international trade. And during this webinar, you're going to hear about solutions to some of the obstacles that we often hear from small businesses um, about what's sort of holding them back. So really not knowing where to start about how to export, how to get access to capital, and then where to get information about international markets. Uh, one of the main things that I hear from small businesses, you know, when I'm going around the country is, oh, wow, I wish I had known about this information earlier. So I just want to applaud all of you for taking time to invest in your businesses um, for this hour, this lunch hour um, here in the East Coast um, to learn about international trade. So we know that women entrepreneurs often have less access to business mentoring. And so that's one of the reasons that we wanted to have this uh, partnership together with the U.S. Department of Commerce to try to do some um, educational activities for women owned businesses. And today, um, we are, I think you're all really um, lucky and in for a treat. We have a wonderful lineup of speakers. We have several successful small businesses so you can hear about their experiences and how they became successful exporters. And then you'll also hear about what federal resources are available for small businesses from U.S. Foreign Commercial Service officers, and you'll hear from the S one of the SBA's export finance managers and the manager of our um, international trade hotline. We hope by the end of the hour, you'll be prepared to help to grow your business to Mexico, which, as Sarah said, is one of the is the top export market for the U.S. and is the 14th largest economy in the world. We definitely know that many small businesses start selling in Mexico because of our close cultural, social, and economic ties. And as Sarah said, our free trade agreement with Mexico, which is the um, called the USMCA, it really does create an environment that makes trade easier for small business. 
So we hope that you can benefit from the insight and resources that we're going to share through this event and the series. I hope you'll ask questions and then take steps as a follow on to engage locally through your local SBA business counseling center or with our partners at the US um, Department of Commerce. So with that, again, um, I wish you a wonderful webinar and um, I hope that you learn a lot from it. Thank you. presenter will be Yasmin Rojas. Yasmin Rojas is our commercial specialist at the U.S. Consulate in Monterrey, Mexico. Yasmin, you may begin your presentation. Thank you very much, Sarah. It is a great pleasure to be here today talking about doing business in Mexico. I'm quite certain that most of you are familiar with Mexico already. We're your neighbor to the south, partner in a trade agreement of the North American region, the USMCA, and the birthplace of guacamole and tacos, too. We are very important. Now we hear that we're the number one trading partner to the United States. And today I want to encourage you to look to Mexico as a place to expand your business if you haven't already. For those of you who don't know us, uh, we're the U.S. Commercial Service, the trade promotion arm of the U.S. Department of Commerce, and our mission is to support uh, the export of U.S. products through our export assistance centers in the United States and the presence uh, that we have in more than 75 countries around the world. How? through individual counseling, to, through direct introductions, as well as market research, advocacy, buyer delegations that go to trade show in the United States, as well as U.S. pavilions where U.S. companies exhibit in trade shows in Mexico. In the case of Mexico, as, as this map shows, we have three offices. We're located in the three main cities of the country, which are Mexico City, Monterrey, where I'm located, and Guadalajara. Here. Commercial specialists such as myself are ready to help you understand the market potential and navigate regulations in over 100 different sectors. We can also provide valuable information for you to understand the basics of the import process in Mexico, which can sometimes feel overwhelming when you're inexperienced. Next slide, please. What are the opportunities for US exporters? Well. There are specific opportunities in nearly every sector. You can contact us and ask as we are always on the lookout to alert you through market research reports and a document which we update yearly called the Country Commercial Guide. Uh, I'm going to share the link with you, so don't worry. We understand that if you're new to export and especially new to Mexico, many aspects of entering the market can seem daunting. Nevertheless, I want to provide some reassurance that you can be successful as a businesswoman in Mexico by sharing a couple of experiences that we've had in, in the recent year. I've been in the commercial service for a while now, <laughs> and I'm pleasantly surprised at the increasing participation of women, not only in leadership positions in Mexican organizations, but also that I see more and more entrepreneurs come to our organization from the United States to create business relations in Mexico. Last year, for example, we were approached by a small North Carolina manufacturer of controllers. This company deals with the Internet of Things. It's a very technical solution, and the main target was the industrial market, typically a male-dominated industry. The company's vice president was uh, also the co-founder of the company, and she exhibited as a part of a U.S. pavilion in a manufacturing show here in Monterrey. She hoped her solution would have demand in Mexico, and she was aware that she would also need to find a partner to provide local service to these potential new Mexican clients. So she needed assistance finding those potential partners. We worked with her hand in hand. We created an agenda of meetings with local companies that could be a fit. I actually had the honor of going with her to every meeting. We were the only two women in every meeting that we had. But by the end of the day, she was having the very fortunate problem of having to decide among very strong prospects to represent her company in Mexico. She succeeded and she actually has a partner now. 
Another example I can give you uh, is when a local interpreter approached us inquiring about opportunities, like what U.S. companies could be looking for partners in Mexico. She's an accomplished salesperson. She used to work for a Mexican cosmetics brand, but her dream was to lead her own brand uh, of beauty products. She had the context, she had the knowledge, uh, but she did not have the financial resources to develop and manufacture a product line from scratch. So we encouraged her to join one of our buyer delegations to a beauty show in the United States. And there we facilitated introductions with a US woman-led private label manufacturer. The US company was not actually looking for a client in Mexico and they were a bit hesitant at first, but of course, they they knew that the introduction was made by a U.S. government agency, and that provided reassurance to start a relationship. So this meeting fortunately turned into a new client for this private label company, and the new skincare line for our Mexican delegate, who's now the proud owner of her own brand with her name. We have a lot of examples um, for successes of business women on both sides of the border. And also talking about the um, trade facilitation services that we offer. And, and we have a lot of cases where the import process, which maybe companies weren't aware of, um, are a challenge to finalizing their shipment into Mexico. So I recall the case of a very small woman-owned U.S. business. They were trying to send samples of body scrubs for the spa sector in Mexico. And of course, she had no idea of the requirements for her products to safely um, get into the Mexican market. So unfortunately, her shipment was detained, but we were able to help out. As I mentioned, we also we also provide information on the import process in Mexico. And with this information that we provided, she was able to salvage that shipment and then do the process correctly and finally get the products to her potential client in Mexico. So, well, we have many examples, but I believe my time is almost up. Next slide, please. I just want to leave you with the message that doing business in Mexico isn't not really much more difficult than doing business elsewhere. Of course, you do need to do your due diligence, get to know the market, do your research, understand your competitors and how they're having success currently in Mexico. And of course, find the right partners in country. And we can certainly help you with this process. I leave you with some resources in this uh, slides our website so you know more about what we do and the upcoming events that we have in Mexico. As promised, a link to our country commercial guide so you can um, see what opportunities we identified for U.S. exporters. And since security is always a concern for all, as in many countries, some cities are safer than others, I am sharing the Department of State's travel page, which I encourage you to, to look into. You can refer to any travel advisories that are being announced. And last but not least, my email. Please feel free to reach out for me for any questions you might have on doing business with Mexico. We're happy to assist or refer you to the appropriate specialist. With this, I end my presentation and I thank you for your time and attention. That was wonderful, Yasmin. Thank you so much for that excellent overview to the Mexican market, and I loved in particular your stories about women business owners and how they can succeed. Yasmin and the staff in all throughout Mexico are tremendous assets, and I encourage you all to be in touch with them. Next, we are having a panel discussion with women business leaders from Mexico and the United States, moderated by my colleague, Pat Cassidy. Pat is the Deputy Senior Commercial Officer at the U.S. Embassy in Mexico City. Pat, over to you. Thank you very much. So to start a discussion, I'd like to introduce our speakers and give you some background on their experience. I think you'll agree we have some high-powered business persons today. Our first panelist, Ms. Kusum Kavia, is the founder and CEO of Combustion Associates Incorporated a provider of custom engineering and manufacturing solutions 
to the energy process and environmental industries worldwide. CIA's products are engineered, manufactured, and tested at their facility in Corona, California. Kusum was instrumental in building the company from a humble startup to a model women-owned minority business with a stellar reputation. She leads the strategic business development at CAI, and under her direction, they've expanded exports to more than 50% of the firm's total sales, delivering products and engineering services to several countries from Bangladesh to Belize and Cameroon to China, and of course, Mexico. Kazum has served on several regional, state, and federal government advisory committees and won prestigious awards, including the President's E Award for Excellence in Exporting, twice. As you can imagine, Kazum is a much sought after speaker due to her expertise on exporting US made goods by small minority owned businesses such as hers. Our second panelist, Ms. Ingrid Orozco, is an internationalist, corporate diplomat, and expert in trade promotion, business expansion, innovation, and inclusive economic development. She's led a dynamic career developing and implementing products in America, Asia, Europe, and the Middle East. As an entrepreneur and businesswoman, she's founded several ventures, including Culture, a technology platform to preserve traditions in the Pacific Alliance region, and You Lead International, a global trade promotion and investment agency where she's currently the CEO. Ingrid has worked with governments of several countries and various trade promotion organizations, chambers of commerce, and multinational companies. She's committed to supporting world economic development by easing access to finance, and creating innovative financial instruments for companies, entrepreneurs, startups, scale-ups, SMEs, and investors. She's a member of the Women's President Organization. She's president to the Organization of Women in International Trade and executive co-director to the Academy for Women Entrepreneurs in Mexico. She was selected by the U.S. Department of State to be part of the Young Leaders of the Americas Initiative and has since received several honors, including being recognized as a global woman leader by the Global Council for the Promotion of International Trade in India. And our third panelist is Ms. Mary Claire Whitaker. She's the founder of Neighbors International, the Mexican consulting partner to the U.S. state trade programs of both North Carolina and Virginia. While leading Neighbors International, Mary Claire and her team have helped over 500 companies, primarily SMEs, in industries including manufacturing, ICT, life sciences, infrastructure, telecommunications, security, and aviation to enter or enhance their productivity in Mexico. Building relationships through market preparation and the organization of trade delegations and business introductions, she and her team support international expansion and increased sales and supply chain opportunities, not only for US companies, but also for their Mexican suppliers and value partners. Mary Claire's firm has served as the Mexico consultant for the government of Ontario, Canada and the state of Colorado trade access programs. Since 2016, she's mentored at the Mass Challenge Mexico City Accelerator Program for, uh, for impact-focused startups. In 2022, she was awarded a scholarship from the American Chamber of Commerce in Mexico's Executive Women's Development Program. Mary Claire earned a BA from the College of William & Mary and an MA from the Queen's University, Belfast. We're delighted that these three businesswomen have agreed to dedicate their valuable time to speaking on this panel today. Thanks to all of you. Let me start by asking a question of Ms. Kavia. Kasum, you've got an impressive record selling from Canada to Kazakhstan. You see, I like the alliteration. Can you tell us the part of your journey that started with your sales to Mexico and what specific advice do you have about doing business as a woman owned business in Mexico? Thank you. Good morning, Pat. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for that kind introduction. 
I want to start out by uh, thanking Sarah Bonner of the uh, US Small Business Administration for inviting me to this panel. And Pat, um, you know, my journey is like so many US small businesses. It starts off by being a first generation immigrant to this country about 30 years ago. And so my, and we are a family owned business. My husband and I came to California and uh, with a suitcase full of dreams. Um, by the time uh, we, we came here and we looked at everything, we said, this is the place to be. And um, after working a little while, we wanted to start our own business. And um, we started out in the engineering space. It's extremely male dominated. My background was accounting and finance. My husband's was engineering. And that gave us the impetus to start Combustion Associates Inc. at a time when Los Angeles needed you know, air quality standards. And so we started out by providing air pollution control systems. And over the years, we've grown into uh, providing power generation systems as well as process systems. So we've done lots of work for the US government. But about 10 years into our small business, we realized that there was a huge market outside. Being first generation immigrants to this country, by the time I was 10 years old, I had lived in three different continents. So I was born in Africa, I moved to India for a little while, and then I ended up in UK. And so we knew that there was a big market for US products and services overseas. And as we looked around for projects, um, we realized that the US Department of Commerce, as well as the US uh, Small Business Administration and webinars like this were really there to help small businesses. And uh, I latched onto that quite a bit. Uh, our journey into going into Mexico in particular um, uh, didn't start out till about 2015. We looked at other projects uh, in other parts of the world very, very far away, and we left Mexico uh, for no other reason than, you know, saying there's opportunities elsewhere. But we quickly realized, as uh, I would say Yasmin pointed out in her presentation, that um, for us, it was having that local partner in Mexico that really got the ball rolling. Um, I think having somebody there local on the ground helped us uh, look at business opportunities. Uh, they were able to come back and say, power generation is an, is an infrastructure project. It takes very long time to develop and it costs millions of dollars. So the kind of sales we do is consultative. It's not so much as you know everybody picks up the phone and says, I need a power generator today. It's uh, a lot about explaining to your customer the benefits uh, of your system, as well as efficiency, uh, and then the integrity of the equipment and how you're going to be there to service that. So for us, the success in Mexico involved hiring a local partner. That partner would communicate with us on a weekly basis as to opportunities and in um, 2019, uh, we got a few opportunities. Uh, I'm glad to say, Pat, that um, we are now currently under contract uh, it, to provide two of our power generation systems to Mexico, and it's going to be a long-term relationship. It's going to be a long-term sale. Uh, so that was our success to Mexico. I will stop there and um, have you continue. Well, thanks very much. I'll turn to Ingrid now. Ingrid, you mentor and support women and, and men uh, growing their business through international trade in a variety of countries. And uh, specifically, you've advised women businesses in Mexico how to sell to the US. Uh, flipping that over, do you have any thoughts for women owned businesses doing business in Mexico? and how they might effectively network and build relationships with Mexican businesses and Mexican businesswomen. 
Absolutely. Thank you very much, Pat, and all the team for the kind invitation. And uh, expanding business to Mexico, uh, especially for U.S. women-owned business, presents unique opportunities. You know, especially in this part of building relationships, is a key. And it's a key that, I, uh, and, I, and, 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 and related to that, I really would like to share, you know, some thoughts and strategies um, based on the experience that we have uh, gotten, not just connecting um, Mexican women to all, to all, to different 25 different markets, but all women from different countries connected to Mexico. And the first, the first um, strategy or the, the first recommendation that I could give, that I could give is understanding cultural nuances for example it's very important to familiarize yourself with the mexican business culture you know emphasizing personal relationships being polite respect building trust are crucial so it's also very important to learn how mexican um the mexican business etiquette you know for example when they tell you my house is your house it's not literally like my house is yours no it's just that i trust on you that i invite you to my house and we can do business so this is number one. The number two, um, when it comes to networking events and associations, for example, it's very important to attend to different industry specific conferences, trade shows, networking events in Mexico to meet potential partners and clients. And sometimes, specifically there, is where you find the best ones. Uh, also explore women focused business associations in Mexico, like OIT, like the Mexican Association of Women Entrepreneurs, that is AMIGE, AMEMGE. There are so many associations, you know, that can connect in order to, to, to liaise directly with women. For example, when we have a specific project, now that we have a project um, that we are leading a project from Turkey, they are recruiting women in in in, uh, in women-owned companies in in Mexico, for example, to do business with. We go to the different chambers of commerce, the specific industry chamber of commerce, because this is very important to 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 mention. In Mexico, we have different sectoral chambers of commerce as well that they can relate you with different women-owned companies that they have identified. Though. Language skills is as well um, is as well another another strategy that you can use, you know, to facilitate the process. While many businesses or many business professionals in Mexico may speak English, having a basic understanding of Spanish can be a, a significant asset too. Um, and uh, and to engage in mentorship programs that connect, for example, U.S. women entrepreneurs with Mexican counterparts is key as well. And um, some, you know, some of these are just strategies that I wanted to to share. But I really would like to emphasize on the on the on 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 build relationships gradually. I always recommend in all the conference that I give to the to the to the to the potential or to the women exporters or not just women and in general businesses that wanted to expand opportunities in Mexico, wanted to find opportunities in Mexico, is that the Mexican market. Is defined by three P's. That is patience. I mean, is is key as focus on building relationships gradually, invest time in understanding the Mexican counterparts and their business objectives. Perseverance is always very important because you are not going to get an email reply in just a, just at the first time. You know, you have to persevere and you have to contact them again and to build this relationship, and for sure to be proactive. It's important to look for opportunities. The Mexican market is a very flexible flexible market. It's a market that is accepting, you know, innovation, that is accepting new products the whole time, that is open to explore opportunities. However, it's important to be proactive, it's important to knock the doors, it's important to uh, look for experts, you know, in the market. I really like to call this um, localization because at the end of the day, uh, we as, as international companies, we are global, but it's important to have a local team to support you on ground uh, or in the ground and to support you to understand and not just to understand but navigate in the culture. Sometimes, you know, it's a matter of uh, simple differences in in hours that you are there, that the local team is in is, is there but there is like a matter to call quickly to to unlock one one negotiation or something like this so basically it's what i could just share tonight with you thank you thank you so much yes. uh, you know i have my my two takeaways that are going to uh work for me in any country i'm in the the, the three p's 
and localization. Thank you. Uh, we'll we'll turn to our third panelist, Mary Claire. You're our panelist who professionally and personally bridges the experience between U.S. and Mexico. And uh, as I mentioned, you currently serve as the trade representative for two states in Mexico. Uh, my agency in the Department of Commerce typically works with firms that are already exporting in one or more markets. And, and for new to export, we encourage firms to explore North America. Well, here we are in Mexico. I wonder if you can tell us a bit about your experience working with U.S. exporters in Mexico. And do you have any advice for first-time exporters and women-owned businesses in this market? Yeah, thanks, Pat. Um, so uh, just to kind of clarify, because not everyone catches this in, in our general bio information and mucho menos that, that I'm gringa, but I'm, I'm based here in Mexico City. Neighbors International is a Mexican company. That being said, we are contractors to the state government organizations that Pat mentioned. Our services are pretty similar to um, what the U.S. Commercial Service offers, what some of the things that uh, Yasmin was talking about. Um, there's some overlap. They're not all the same. Um, so a lot of what we do, um, I think, you know, it's going to sound like I'm repeating what Ingrid and Kusum were just saying, as well as Yamin, about the importance of relationships. But I think it's really important to emphasize the fact that, you know, STEP, SBA, the state governments, they're all devoting resources to basically help y'all develop relationships in Mexico, which is not as easy as it sounds, right? Um, it's it's an expensive and, as Ingrid was just mentioning, a, a pretty time-consuming undertaking, right? You're, you're really investing in building trust. Um, I think that that's important for SMEs in particular, because you know if you're a larger transnational company, you can kind of come in, start an office, hire folks, you know, put it put in an office of 30 people. I think maybe some of our larger company clients might say, you know, it doesn't, it's not that easy for them either. But effectively, they're they're kind of, you know, buying relationships in a way. They're they're hiring locals. Um, or for an SME, it's a lot more gradual than that. Um, as as Ingrid was mentioning, you know, going to trade shows, networking. Um, you know, my advice for a first time exporter is to think about the fact that you're making. A business and expansion, a business expansion, that's an investment that you are trying to um, protect and mitigate risks around it, which is risky. You know, we have USMCA um, kind of as our common legal jurisdiction, but you're you're a little bit, you know, in the, in the jungle internationally. There's there's not a lot to protect you in terms of kind of the mechanisms that we have doing business uh, domestically. Um, so what is your main risk protection? It's information, but above all, it's these, these strong relationships. It's really, you know, authentic human trust that you're building. Um, so you think about going into a new, a new market, um, an international market, you're entering a, a new community. You're entering a new business community. You're trying to build trust among people that don't know don't know you, <laughs> you know, don't, don't have any context for you, don't know uh, people that you've worked with in the past. So how do you do that? Um, as I mentioned, kind of going back to the, the services that are facilitated by North Carolina, Virginia, uh, many other states have similar programs, and of course, the U.S. commercial service as well. Um, you know, I think our, uh, our number one goal is to get you to come visit the market. Um, but, you know, so the, a lot of our services revolve around getting you to shows, doing trade delegations, things like that. Um, but we also do research. We do a lot of outreach and matchmaking. So company profiles, introductions via Zoom before you come to market. All of that, um, you know, you can look at the research in a couple different ways, you know, strategic planning, information about what your customers or partners are interested in, what their activities and challenges are in Mexico, you know, just so you can plan about how to approach uh, conversations with them, but you're also looking for common ground. You're looking for ways to start building those relationships. So yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of my takeaway is really think of it as entering a new community and think of it as building trust and how can you leverage this this research and market visits and tools that, that we're trying to um, help you use to get into Mexico. Thank you, Mary Claire. So building on uh, the tools that can help you do that, uh, both Kusum and Mary Claire have some in-depth in-depth experience using uh, and and helping others use 
the Department of Commerce, the Small Business Administration, and uh, U.S. Trade and Development Agency trade promotion programs. And I wonder if you can uh, maybe discuss one of those experiences and if you have any tips or thoughts on how to leverage those programs. And I'll, I'll start with Kasum first and then go to Mary Claire. Well, thanks, Pat. Um, I really want to echo what Mary Claire said, and that is, you know, building trust is a really important factor. And then also listening. Um, the way that we have been successful in exporting our goods and services has always been listen to the customer and don't provide the equipment or service, but provide a solution. Listen to what their issues are. And, and then come up with a way of partnering with others so that you could offer them a broader um, opportunity to doing business with, um, with the US. But uh, going back to your question, Pat, on what kind of resources that we have leveraged over the years, and I would ha have to say the US Department of Commerce, the commercial services has been really a, a, a very good partner to us. Anytime we receive an inquiry, from overseas, we first reach out to US commercial services. We let them know this is the partner. Can you help us with some due diligence or market research? They come back, they give us the guidelines. Yes, you know, this is somebody legitimate. And uh, and what we do then is start a dialogue right away. We want to get um get them on a Teams call or a Zoom call like this. We want to understand them. And then also we want them, we invite them to visit our facility so that they can also do their due diligence on us and let, let themselves know that we are truly a, an engineering and a manufacturing house and this is what we do. Um, I, we have uh, utilized the STEP grant, which is part of the state of California uh, grant uh, in 2019, Pat, uh, we used it for market development. Now, everybody needs to update their website and their web presence. We've all heard of how social media is so important. And there is actually grant funding available to do this. So the way we utilize this is we filled out an application, submitted it to the, to the governor's office, and it talked about marketing, enhancing our website, and search engine optimization. Because the sooner that you could reach up in your uh, search engine uh, on the types of services you provide, the better chance you have to market your goods and services. And that grant funding was, was provided. It was a very easy process, I have to say. And within a very short period of time, we got the yes, you know, you have the grant funding, funding please continue. In 2023, we utilized the STEP grant again to actually go for the Gold Key Award from Mexico. Because we knew this is our, our partner, this is our neighbor here, uh, very close to Los Angeles, and why are we not doing more business there? Uh, the fact that we've secured one contract, we feel very comfortable with our customer and what we're able to offer, also made sure that uh, we could also host a reverse trade mission and other things as well. I also wanted to do a shout out to the WTAAC program. Uh, so, if anybody is interested, it's um, actually uh, serviced by the University of Southern California, and it is funded by the U.S. Department of Commerce, and it's the Trade Adjustment Assistance Program. And it's a cost share program uh, that we have utilized four times now to up update our website, uh, to uh, market development, and other things of that nature that become expensive for a small business. We don't have a huge budget for marketing. And I think that the fact that um, uh, the US Commercial Services and SBA realizes this uh, is, is a huge benefit. And so those are a couple of uh, programs that we've utilized and we continue to utilize and they help us with our marketing budget. Uh, I, I would just add that, for, you know, the first step with what we work with, um, with North Carolina and Virginia, the number one use of it is, is travel. And I think that's, um, you know, one of the reasons why that's such a focus area is because it's kind of an area, especially now with Zoom, that companies might try to uh, cut costs on or cut corners on because it is expensive, but it's so important. It's easy to take it for granted because you can exchange numbers and quotes over email. But just going back to, you know, even 
using public transportation or, or eating street food, things like that is, it goes back to this establishing common ground if you can actually go to market. Thank you. Well, thanks to both of you. And, and uh, here I am in the Department of Commerce and I, even I didn't know about the trade adjustment assistance program. So now I've got that much toolkit. Uh, I wanna have one last question that I'll address to uh, Ingrid first, which is, um, what do you see as the current and future opportunities to export to Mexico? And is there something, a unique set of opportunities for women-owned businesses? Yes, uh, thank you very much, Pat. Yeah, there are so many general opportunities that I can mention on here, and I'm very happy to, to, to have the opportunity to do so. Because uh, I can just announce, you know, six that uh, we uh, recent that we recently and that we are we are already working on them. The first one is in manufacturing and assembly. For example, Mexico has become a key player in global manufacturing, and there are opportunities for exporting companies' machinery equipment. The second one is into the automotive industry. That, uh, as everybody knows, you know, this has been. Uh, one of the top for excellence for a long time ago, uh, because at the end of the day, we have a strong presence specifically of the major automotive manufacturers. There are opportunities for exporting parts and components. Um, another one is for sure and for excellence agricultural and food products. Mexico imports a significant amount of food and agricultural products, even if you don't believe it. So opportunities exist is for U.S. exporters in, in sectors like meat, grains, and processed foods. This is important. In terms of renewable energy, the demand for renewable energy solutions is still growing in Mexico. There are opportunities for exporting solar panels, wind turbines, and related technologies. Uh, also, technology and IT services. Um, in terms of you know different other different technological solutions. And for sure, e-commerce and retail. The imagine the rise of the e-commerce has created has created opportunities for exporting um, consumer goods to Mexico. Online retail platforms provide a channel for U.S. products. And when we when it comes to opportunities for women-owned businesses, I just would like to mention you know the sectors or the main sectors what we have con constantly getting more projects and projects. Like this is the case, for example, it's a growing market for health and beauty products. It's a growing market. Um, now Mexicans nowadays, Mexicans con or Mexican consumers are increasingly conscious of environmental issues. You know, all the women-owned businesses offering eco-friendly and sustainable products might find a receptive market as well. In terms of educational services. Women entrepreneurs in the education sector can explore opportunities in providing training, coaching, and consulting services as well. When it comes to healthcare services, um, into the healthcare sector, you know, we can explore opportunities in providing services as well, wellness programs, or specialized healthcare products. It's good. But remember, success in any market requires through research, understanding local regulations, building strong relationships. And uh, and I will always emphasize on that women-owned businesses might benefit from participating in women-focused business networks, leveraging resources tailored to support their road international markets. Another important um for example, if you if you approach the the International Trade Center, you know a, a UN organization, with the one we also have the pleasure to lead a, operations in Mexico. It's also a very good service where you can get so much information about the potential opportunities that you can get, not just in the Mexican market, but in different 125 markets around the world. So, and basically, it's what I can share with you. <laughs> Thank you. That's a lot. And and you know, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, take to zoom off the hook because I know there's an opportunity to export energy and environmental uh, equipment from California to Mexico. That's for sure. <laughs> so I'll turn to Mary Claire for uh, concluding thoughts. Uh, I think, to be honest, Ingrid gave a really good overview. My, my kind of two second thing is um, leveraging this kind of consolidation of supply networks that's coming in. You know, there's a lot of foreign direct investment from Europe and Asia coming into Mexico. There could be more. And that's an opportunity for U.S. suppliers to sell it into. You don't just become, you know, another link in their supply chain that's growing, your operations that are growing down here. But you can also provide services that support, We, you know, 
uh, logistics optimization companies. We've worked with companies that do cybersecurity, even for manufacturing operations. That that is a huge growth area. And you know, you guys, US Commercial Service has great rundown of of the opportunities as well. I would add, just because I didn't touch on the women question earlier <laughs> that you pointedly asked. Um, I think women are in a specifically good. What I mentioned about you know exporting is breaking into a market or into a community that you are not already a member of. Uh, I think that a lot of women have experience with that domestically, just in, in terms of expanding their businesses in the United States. Um, so I think, you know, women are perhaps particularly well positioned as exporters. There's a reason why uh, USMCA sought to be more inclusive. It's better for trade in general. And um, I think that, you know, the, we should consider it not only wide open, but um, becoming more and more open. Thank you, Mary Claire. Well, I'm going to wrap up on that note and thank all of our panelists for sharing your insights and experience. And of course, I want to encourage our audience today to uh, reach out to us in the commercial service, but also to reach out to the panelists for follow up, whether you have questions of them or whether you need support in the markets that they cover. Thank you very much. That was terrific, Pat, and I can't thank Kusum, Ingrid, and Mary Claire enough for that tremendous insights and sharing of really practical information on how to do business in Mexico. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I always find these roundtables so interesting, and I hope our attendees did well as well. We're next going to learn about financing exports and tips to access capital from Abby Martinez. Export Finance Manager with the U.S. Small Business Administration in New York. This is a particularly important issue for women-owned businesses, access to capital. So we look forward to hearing from you. Abby, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sarah, and good afternoon and good morning, everyone. Uh, like Sarah mentioned, I am Abby Martinez. I am the Export Finance Manager for the Office of International Trade here at the U.S. Small Business Administration. Our office serves as the champion for small businesses at any stage of their export journey. So whether you've never sold anything to a customer in another country or if you've already had success selling internationally uh, through online platforms, or maybe you have experience selling through lots of distributors and to lots of different companies. We are your partner at SBA on international sales and connecting your business to opportunities in global markets. Next slide. At SBA, the Office of International Trade, we want to make sure you are not alone when selling globally. SBA has solutions to many of the obstacles that small businesses face, and some of those obstacles may be holding you back from going global. The Office of International Trade mirrors what SBA as a whole is providing. The only difference is, is we focus on global opportunities. So we do provide export counseling, we do provide grants to reach international buyers, and we do provide export finance solutions as well. Next slide. So with our export uh, counseling, there are various ways we offer export counseling and training and our website sba.gov uh, slash trade tools provides a wealth of information. And for our Spanish speakers on the line, uh, si quisiera, yo quisiera mencionar que este enlace en nuestra página web tiene todos nuestros recursos traducido en español para su empresa que quisiera tener más información. Um, we also have our international trade hotline where companies can ask questions about international trade. We have export finance managers like myself that are located throughout the country. Um, and lastly, we have webinars and programs that are available to increase you know, your education on topics that are relevant to you. Next slide. So the grants that we have, so this is really for established small businesses that are new to export and current exporters that are looking to expand further into new markets. The Office of International Trade provides state 
trade expansion program. Um, and these step grants uh, provide financial awards that help our partner organizations assist small businesses with export development grants to get started. Um, exporters can apply for these grants, as you mentioned, uh, as Kasum mentioned earlier, um, you can apply for these grants and they can be used to attend trade shows or trade missions or um, optimizing your website um, or any other, uh, any, other, uh, any other need that you may have. Um, However, I will mention this, that given that each state runs their grant program a little differently, I encourage you to reach out to get to know the point of contact for your state or territory um, to learn if the step could help you move forward in your export, in your export journey. Next slide. So our resource partners. So SBA is engaged in counseling and training, mostly through our district offices and our partner organizations who provide local counselors to help businesses get training, assistance, and create plans to start, grow, or expand your export business. Like the companies, like the uh, partner agencies mentioned here, like Ascent and the Women Business Centers and the Small Business Development Center, Centers, um, there are international counselors at each of these resources who can help you work on building your business, growing its financial health, and helping you develop a strong export business plan so you can tell a great story of your business. How is it generating sales? Into what countries? Who is your customer base? All of those things are what really help make that business plan a successful business plan. And it also may address how you mitigate the risk that you're selling internationally. Next slide. So once you have a plan and some experience under your belt, financing will be key in helping your business to grow and sustain that growth. We know that businesses that export have better bottom lines, right? They're much more uh, successful and are more resilient to financial downturns. Sometimes the first hurdle of exporting or fulfilling an order is the upfront cost. So whether that's access to financing or the cost of participating in a trade show to find that sale, SBA offers three unique loan guarantee products that can help. Our most flexible program is our SBA Export Express, and this product has a $500,000 limit, while our export working capital and international trade loans both have a $5 million limit and both provide working capital. But let's say that you're not ready for a traditional bank loan at this time. Right now, you're just thinking about going global, or maybe you're just thinking about starting your business. Well, we have other resources as well that can assist you. You can utilize SBA's microloans, which can be used to start building up your business credit, as well as our community advantage loans that can go up to 350,000. So whichever path you decide to take that works best for you, I would highly suggest you begin building that lending relationship. And it's interesting how everyone was talking about building relationships, right? This definitely also happens with your lender. Um, this can help you in the long run to be prepared and know what to expect when you need financing. Next slide. So in closing, if you would like more information of please feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is there. I hope you have found this useful and that you're taking away some nuggets of information. Um, and I wanna stress that you have a partner at SBA's Office of International Trade. I truly appreciate having the opportunity to share this information with you and thank you for your time. Sarah? Abby, that was terrific. We have found so many wonderful uh, partnerships and cooperations with SBA. So thank you. Seeing a lot of claps and approvals. So great resource and thank you. Thank you so much. We're now going to turn to my colleague, Diego Gatesco. He is the director of the Commercial Services Export Assistance Center in Wheeling, West Virginia. Also important to this region, he serves as the global team lead for the Commercial Services Trade Americas team 
which helps companies exporting and promoting their goods and services throughout this hemisphere. Diego, over to you. Thank you, Sara. Um, very quickly, thank you um, for this great event. Um, you have heard that it's important to be in, in the market, be present and meet with potential um, partners uh, in person. So I just wanna bring you uh, an opportunity that is coming up soon in March. We have the opportunities for women-led businesses in the Americas Conference. It's gonna be done in Panama City, Panama, March 10th to 11th. Um, so I'm gonna show you a little bit about what the event will look like, I have some pictures of prior events that we had. So throughout this conference, it's a two days conference, you're gonna get some um, market briefing, uh, regional market briefing actually, um, not only about uh, Panama, uh, but it's gonna be about the, the region in, in general. We're gonna have 18 countries represented there. So you're gonna be able to meet one-on-one -on -one, uh, with officers and trade specialists uh, from 18 countries. Actually, Pat that you heard from him today is gonna be there um, to meet with you uh, to talk about Mexico, for example. Uh, like him, we're gonna have Argentina, Chile, Brazil, uh, the DR, uh, El Salvador, Guatemala, many, many other countries as well. You're gonna be able to meet with um, resources like finance. You're gonna have SBA and Exim Bank present there. Logistics, legal consideration, e-commerce, marketing, um, you name it. So there's gonna be a lot of resources that are available for you. Uh, the conference is gonna have a plenary session and workshops as well, plenty of networking uh, opportunities. They're gonna have two receptions, a luncheon, and about three uh, coffee breaks, uh, plenty of time to, to talk to other companies uh, or sponsors and officers and, and, and the team. Uh, we also gonna have, actually would be interesting, uh, gonna have the main reception on Monday night uh, at the ambassador's residence, which is great. So um, this event is gonna be able to help you to gather uh, market intelligence, uh, in the, be able to make industry contacts, um, so we're gonna basically we try to kind of put this together to help you to uh, increase your export sales uh, to the region. Um, timeline very quickly. Um, we're looking at to see you there March uh, around March time. You have the events about 10, 11, and you can return home on the 12th. Uh, this is part of a trade mission that we're doing to Panama, Costa Rica, and Colombia. Uh, actually, some of the participants today are uh, part of the U.S. delegation traveling uh, on the trade mission but they're gonna be also at the uh, conference. Here's an idea uh, of the uh, agenda. Uh, we do have a Sunday, we have one-on-one -on -one meetings, uh, the market briefings, uh, the reception, and then Monday we have the plenary session in the morning, um, the luncheon, and then we have workshops and one-on-one -on -one meetings that we have on Sunday in the afternoon. So in the afternoon, we divide the group in, in two. Uh, and then Tuesday, you, you will uh, be back to the US uh, or um, have business to business meetings if you're a part of the trade mission. Uh, for those ones that wanna uh, go earlier or leave after the event, um, we're gonna have um, the special rate for the event uh, also cover a few days before, a few days after. So to give you an idea, um, here's what, what the look, what it looks like. And here are the uh, sponsors for the trade mission and the conference. Uh, without them, we uh, actually cannot make these events happen. But I wanna go back to the cost, it's 500 for, uh, per participant. Uh, and the, to give you an idea of the cost of the hotel, it's about $110 uh, per night. And that includes breakfast and internet there and, at the hotel. So if depending on the area that you're coming in from the US, it might be cheaper to go to Panama than another city in, in the country for an event like this. So um, great event um, to be uh, to take advantage of. Um, you can use, um, Step funds, you, you heard today about from Abby. Um, if you're not able to use those, depending on the state you're working, you're in, um, you can also tap into the Express, um, the, ex, the Export Express that she mentioned as well uh, to participate uh, on this event. Um, that's, if you have any questions, please let us know. The team, Sara also will be there um, in Panama. So we're happy to, to help you uh, answer any question you might have about the event. Sara, back to you. Thank you. And thank you, Diego. I'm mindful of the time, but we're there. We have a few more minutes. Thank you for that. Um, I, I can't encourage enough participation in this conference, especially if you're looking to export for the first time. This is an incredible way and a relatively economical way to come 
with critical market and meet representatives from 15 or more 18, I think of our, of our offices in the Western hemisphere. So thank you for that. Lots of information and we'll share it with you. Last, but certainly not least, I'd like to introduce. My wonderful colleague at the Small Business Administration, Sarah Bonner. Sarah is a senior international trade specialist in the uh, trade policy division at the Office of International Trade at the U.S. Small Business Administration. Sarah, over to you. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you so much for putting this um, incredible program together. We are so proud to be partnering with the International Trade Administration on it and providing a series designed for women to really help you grow your business. And hopefully you'll see all the doors that are open to you and that um, there are many resources that you can access from across the US government. We hope you've identified a new resource today and that you'll sign up and also contact, um, reach out to us for more information. If we can move to the next slide. Um, on the next slide, um, we wanted to highlight a couple events for you. Um, in addition to the women led businesses conference that Diego just discussed. Um, you are actually learning for the 1st time we're announcing that the 3rd US Mexico, Canada. Small and medium sized enterprise dialogue will be held May 16th in Montreal. This is a great opportunity to meet businesses um, from uh, North America and to also meet the governments and hear about the resources and opportunities um, for using um, our trade agreement, the USMCA. Um, we also wanted to um, highlight again the STEP program. If you could switch to the next slide. Um, the STEP program is really unique and helps open more doors for, um, for women-owned businesses. And uh, we hope that you will work with a small business development center, a women's business center, or another SBA resource partner on um, designing your international strategy at no cost and also applying for this um, valuable program if it is offered in your US state or territory. Uh, we look forward to partnering with you and also taking your questions at this time. I'd like to turn it back over to my dear friend, Sarah, from the International Trade Administration, who will be guiding us through the Q&A. Yes, we get confused between the two Sarahs here. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for giving us a little over an hour of your time. We have a couple of questions, and I encourage if others have additional questions to send them to all of us who've been speaking today and whose information uh, that um, you have or you will have soon. Um, someone has a question, and I'm going to direct it to Yasmin. It is, how can I register my company as a provider for companies who want to do business in Mexico? Thank yeah. you, Sarah. Actually, yes, we do have uh, the commercial service a directory. It's called a business service provider directory. It is a listing of several business and support organizations and service firms with the expertise to help U.S. exporters and investors interested in Mexico. So uh, right in our website, you can access it and you can be a part of it. Um, there's a small fee associated, but it gives you uh, an option to be listed there. That is the first place. We direct US companies that are looking for, you know, legal services, accounting services in Mexico, or even uh, consultants as well. Thank you, Yasmin. One other question we had, and I don't know if any of our other speakers want to weigh in. Do you or your companies, your your companies help new companies with contracts, or do you have recommendations on how to proceed with final agreement contracts? I don't know if um, maybe uh, Kusum or Mary Claire, I don't know if that's a question. So how do you help new companies with contracts or do you have recommendations on how to proceed with final agreement contracts? Any takers? Sarah, this is Abby uh, with SBA. Um, what I always advise exporters whenever they're uh, starting their export journey is that they should always have in their back pocket at least five um, partners with them. One of them being an international attorney that can help them review contracts, um, etc. The other one is an international accountant, 
of course, a logistics or freight forwarder, um, of course, utilizing all of the federal uh, government agencies that are out there and partner resources and also a lender. So, in this case, I would definitely refer them to maybe an international attorney that can help them with that contract. Very, very helpful, Abby. Um, let me see if I have some others in the chat. Um, bear with me a second. Sorry. Uh, we have a question. <laughs> Hard to do this all this time. I think the question was. Um, sorry, sorry. Don't read the chat. Okay. Do that. <laughs> okay. Hang on. Um, I have a question that I think is useful for people who are thinking about exporting. If any of you could share one piece of advice with the small businesses participating in today's webinar, what would it be? I think we've heard about networking and getting contacts. But if there's anything that you've learned over the course of advising companies or yourself being in Mexico, uh, uh, what would it be? How, what, would, what advice would you like to offer? Mary Claire? Yeah, a simple one is um, get comfortable using WhatsApp and get comfortable asking people for their cell phone number so you can contact them on WhatsApp. I have heard that many, many times. So download that app before you go. Does anybody else have some idea what what they would after a number of years what you, what you wished you had known earlier um, in your experience? I would say, Sarah, that for me it was getting outside my comfort zone. We get we as small businesses, women-owned businesses, get very comfortable with doing the day to day, and we never take that step out of our comfort zone. And whether it's Mexico or Canada or Panama. We've got to do that. So it's getting out of your comfort zone and you are going to make mistakes, but you learn that as, as lessons learned. So I, I would say that what I would have done sooner is I would have attended more of these um, trade shows and exhibitions. And, and there's always the excuse, right? That I don't have time. I have other things going on, but uh, you, you gotta be selling all the time. You gotta have to network, you look for partnerships and you'll be surprised if you open yourself up what the opportunities that come to you. I lastly wanted to say, I wanted to do a shout out to the USTDA. Uh, mm -hmm. The Trade and Development Agency does have a program for small businesses. So if the women owned businesses find a project out in Mexico, you can actually apply to the USTDA for what's called a feasibility study. And so for the feasibility study, yes, it's a process, but it is something that is available to small businesses and that is uh, funded by the USTDA. And then the US Export Import Bank uh, that I have utilized in uh, getting that financing, which is key to uh, being a successful um, project completion. Kusum, thank you for that. We had one question. I think I'm going to wrap with this one. It says, you know, that we're looking for a local commerce specialist uh, in Chicago. The last slide has the link for your local trade specialist, the website trade.gov forward slash commercial services offices US. Know that in addition to having people like Pat Cassidy and Yasmin in Mexico, we also are represented in 75 countries. We have 106 offices in the United States. And so the best way to find out who your person in Chicago or wherever is to click on this, which we will send you. And as a reminder, the entire presentation, the slides, the contacts and a recording will be made, made available to all participants who registered in a couple of days. I want to close by thanking all of our speakers, all of our wonderful partners at SBA, uh, Claire Eamon, Sarah Bonner, and thank you, Pat and Yasmin and, and this terrific panel. I learned so much. It's always so wonderful to learn. I hope all of you learn quite a bit. This is a great market, and I hope you take advantage of our many opportunities coming up. And one last plug for the doing business in uh, the, the hemisphere and come to Panama City. We'll have a lot of uh, wonderful contacts for you to meet there the 10th and 11th of March. So go ahead and register. Thank you everyone. Have a great rest of your afternoon. Take care.